We can use a battery to power some components, but usually a single battery isn't enough to power our devices. For this, we need to combine the batteries. We can connect batteries in two different ways, series or parallel. We have covered these circuit types in great detail previously. Do check those out, links can be found in the video description down below. When we connect the batteries in series, the voltage of each battery is added together. So two 1.5 volt batteries gives us three volts, and three batteries gives us 4.5 volts. The actual voltage might be slightly different in the real world. The voltage increases because each battery is boosting the electrons that enter it, so we get a higher voltage. If we connect the batteries in parallel, then we only get 1.5 volts regardless of how many we connect together. That's because the path merges at the supply, but splits at the return, so the electrons will not be boosted. However, this configuration type will be able to provide more current, and it will also have a larger capacity, so we can power something for longer. For example, if the battery had a capacity of 1,200 milliamp hours, and we place two in parallel, then we will have a capacity of 2,400 milliamp hours, but a voltage of only 1.5 volts. If we wire them in series, we now have a capacity of just 1,200 milliamp hours, but a voltage of 3 volts. We use batteries to power our circuits, but how long can a battery power our circuit for? When we look at the packaging or data sheet for a battery, we see a value with the letters MAH next to it. This is the milliamp hour rating. For example, this one has a rating of 2,500 milliamp hours. That tells us it could theoretically provide a current of 2,500 milliamps for one hour, or 1,250 milliamps for two hours, or 20 milliamps for 125 hours. However, in real life, it probably won't actually last this long because the chemical reaction slows so the internal resistance of the battery changes as it empties. There are lots of other things that affect this, such as the age and the temperature. There's no real way to precisely calculate the lifespan. The best way is to simply test it. We can, however, make an estimate of the lifespan with the following formula. The battery life equals the capacity in milliamp hours divided by the circuit current in milliamps. So, for example, in this circuit, we calculate a demand of 19 milliamps, and the battery has a capacity of 3,000 milliamp hours. So, 3,000 divided by 19 gives us 157.9 hours. But this really is the best case scenario, though, and in reality, it almost certainly won't achieve this. We have also built a free, simple calculator on our website where you can estimate the runtime of a battery as well as the required capacity. Do check that out, links can be found in the video description down below. To measure the voltage, we simply need to select the DC function on our multimeter, and then we connect the red lead to the positive terminal and the black lead to the negative. This will give us a voltage reading. You can see that this battery is rated at 1.5 volts, but when we test it, we get 1.593 volts. The two values are close, but usually not the same. When the battery is dead or dying, we get a lower voltage. This one, for example, reads 1.07 volts, so it's completely dead. However, sometimes we could still get a voltage of around 1.5 volts, even if the battery is of no use. To fully test the battery, we need to test it under a load condition to check whether it's still useful. And for that, we need a resistor. So we take a resistor of around 100 ohms, but it doesn't have to be exactly this value though. We connect the resistor between our two probes. In this case, I've just used some crocodile clips to connect the resistor between the probes like this. This way current will flow through the resistor and we can take a voltage reading as this occurs. If the battery is still good, then the voltage level will only drop slightly. For example, this battery has a rated voltage of 1.5 volts. With no load, it is 1.593 volts. With the resistor connected, we take a reading of 1.547 volts, so this battery is still good. 
However, this battery is also rated at 1.5 volts. When we take a measurement with no load, it oddly has a reading of exactly 1.5 volts. But when we connect the resistor, we can see that the voltage has dropped to 0.863 volts. So we know that this battery has run out of charge. Okay guys, that's it for this video, but to continue your learning, then check out one of the videos on screen now, and I'll catch you there for the next lesson. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, as well as theengineeringmindset.com.